Well, I think, uh, you know, we had big eyes with the big expansion because of some of the places we think we're competing with, but we're finding now those places that got really big are too big, yeah, and they're problems. losing money. They're not making money back right. based on what they've done. And we're close. talking even Jacob Javits in New York. They had a $1.8 billion plan, and now they're poo-pooing that. Even the people who were very supportive of it and felt it was going to help them tremendously, now they're understanding maybe not. So polishing this jewel, cleaning it up, fixing it up, modernizing it, and adding the kind of space that you're talking about, I think everyone can agree on if we can agree on the way it's going to be paid uh, equitably, paid for, uh, and in a way that everybody can accept. And not in a way that so many people feel these days that, well, you can pay this amount because you've got that amount, and you only pay this amount because you only have that amount. And you, I mean, this is that's just a bad move all the way around. Right. But I, I think if you look at, at the way this is actually structured, and it has some uh, essentials in there that, that really has to be done. I think if we sell it as a region, number one, it goes to an authority uh, that actually run it. And, and, and at that point, I'd like to see a private entity come in and actually uh, run run the operations. Number two, the, there's what is called an endowment fund, and this gets technical with it, but the reason why the endowment fund is there is because no private company will come in and run it because there's no business plan in the United States that actually has a convention center that, that makes money. So you have the endowment fund that is set up so that they draw off that, off the interest of it, so that they can start covering their operational expenses and, and things like that. I mean, you get, it, you get, it gets technical, but it has a framework that within, I think you'd recognize within the banking industry and things like that, that actually allows it to work. And it's the first framework that financially, if we plug in and out, I think, and there's a comfort level that you can see it actually move if forward. If we get closer, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that I'm knowing I'm being taped, but get the cost down to where it's reasonable. And uh, then I think, you know, and, and take out some of the things which I think are frills that we really don't need and can't afford. Uh, for instance, the walkway from Kobo to the Renaissance Hotel, uh, which would mirror the people mover route. Uh, I, you know, we can't afford that uh, and or those kind of things. But then we get down just the basic framework of expanding and upgrading. And then I think we, we can make this thing happen. i tell you. Uh, we have a deal. No. Hey, is, is there an opportunity <laughs> to stage it or do you need to do it all at once? To stage it. To do, stage, it stages, do it in stages rather than, rather than uh, coming than, up with all that. No, I, I, I think that's good. In fact, one of my proposals in, in, in response to Bob's proposal was he has something like $209 million in, in upgrades. Well, let's prioritize. Okay, let's do the first $100 million of upgrades, the docks for sure, right. the interest and egress. And then as things move along, we can perhaps, if we find more stakeholders, people come, uh, other ideas, other sources of revenue may come to uh, be identified, then we can do the next three or four uh, steps that, uh, of the uh, rehab. But you're right. Why do we have to buy it up to hold $209 million right from the get-go? What do you say about uh, that? Well, I mean, we, we'd have to look at all of it uh, only from the standpoint that the problem with bringing in other stakeholders, and I mean, if we can find them, that's fine. But like, for example, when we go How to do talk spell to casino, <laughs> 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 like uh, like General Motors, I, and I know Brooks has been pushing, let's say the automotives. Well, let, when you step back and you think of it, and, and they raise a good argument, they say, you know what? We are the ones, we go in and we lease it. We pay a tremendous amount of rent every year uh, as our expense for the, for the auto show. Uh, so if you're the landlord, now you're telling us not only you got to pay the rent, but you got to pay for uh, the whole house as well to, for it to get uh, repaired. Uh, that's uh, in the terms of a triple uh, net lease. And I don't think there's too many businesses that want to enter into a triple net lease because that's basically what it is. I know well, because the this? county uh, building was set uh, up uh, like uh, that. How about this? We're operating in a paradigm that probably existed after World War II. It's called the Tri-County area, Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb. Well, things have changed since the end of World War II. Why don't we say Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, Washtenaw, which has come of age, and maybe Monroe. Why do we always stuck with us, the C Street? If we expand the base I of our... I always thought there was going to be a great megalopolis. You like that word? Because like we haven't word. heard it in a long time. That's a good word. The great megalopolis of Toledo, there's Monroe right in the center, and Detroit, and everywhere in between. There's strength in numbers. Now, not in every way. We found that if you make the schools too big... You're not so efficient. You're not doing such a good job, and they're going back to the little s smaller schools. But whatever happened to the opportunity of a great megalopolis with all that land and all of those resources and all those good, bright people between Toledo and Detroit? Because we all need each other. Because if Detroit has a cold, Toledo has pneumonia, and, and Monroe could be on life support. 
So, 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 what about that? We well, got Cabela's from a practical Dundee. standpoint. I know. It's filled in. <laughs> but Cabela's. You know, I love that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's <laughs> run a people story. mover from downtown Detroit to Cabela's. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it, from from the Cobalt standpoint, from a pragmatic political standpoint, uh, the mechanisms are set up right now where we can do this in a short, relative uh, amount of time. If we actually added any of those other counties, you'd have to go for a complete referendums for new taxes and everything hey, else. I'm just trying uh, to in, spread out the, the, the yeah, base of support. And, and this could delay that project another two years. So I, I think from We don't have that kind of time. Right. That, I that's don't think. exactly right. No, we really don't have that kind of time. In fact, we don't have any more time on this uh, program. It just zipped well, right by. Will get the last word? <laughs> no. Uh, actually, <laughs> when it's right. <laughs> actually, I, I think the, uh, the the president of the bank should get the I last word. That's right. right. Because uh, sitting between the two of you guys and me sitting over here, he hasn't had a chance to say anything. David, uh, uh, just some of your thoughts, and, and from being from somewhere else and living elsewhere, uh, sometimes we do need somebody from the outside with fresh eyes to take a look and, and, and offer their thoughts. You know, Paul W., gentlemen, I'm encouraged that we're even having the dialogue. I think it's fantastic that we can sit down and, and talk about stuff like this, and so that, quite frankly, anybody that logs on to WJR.com can hear what we're saying. And I think, uh, I think there's a lot of room to make this thing work. Whether it's Kobo, whether it's regionalism, whether it's uh, the diversification. Again, I go back to my thoughts earlier. What's good for one should be good for everybody. We have businesses, banks in all of the markets that we're talking about, and I need them all to be successful. So selfishly, let's figure out a way to grow the whole place. And uh, every other bank will benefit from that. The consumers will benefit from that. We'll actually grow population, which, uh, I mean, that's the key to the long-term growth anyway, is getting more people to live here getting more people to live here by having a place where more people want to live right because they can afford it and they can take advantage of all of the natural beauty that we have uh, that we maybe take for granted when i think of the number of people listening right now on uh, wjr.com who've never made it up to mackinac island or any number of places that are truly uh, world-class jewels uh, and much closer to home and uh, and we don't always uh, we, we take them for granted but we do have the lakes, we have the rivers, we have a lot of the natural resources and the seasons and the golf and the skiing and all the other things that people would uh, kill for. And we need to bear that in mind, take advantage of that, while we also create an area where people want to bring their businesses or even lately keep their businesses. It's not easy. Uh, as, as much as you've said, Brooks, at the beginning of our program, I'll say at the end of our program, yeah, I wouldn't want to have to be in uh, Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick's shoes because He's starting from such a low end to try to fix everything. You claim that you started at a higher end at uh, Oakland County. You're being a little bit uh, – you, you did a lot for Oakland County in the 16 years that you've been there, uh, a tremendous amount. And you've done a lot in Wayne County. And, and you kind of took over at least a county that everyone thought was doing just fine. And I suppose when you get behind the books and you look at stuff, you go, oh, my goodness. Same way it'll happen for Brooks when he runs for governor. People will get in there and they'll say, oh, my gosh, you can't carry these numbers over like that. What was he thinking? But anyway. Enron. <laughs> but but there's, there, there, we have a lot to do in the region. And uh, uh, I'm glad that we're at least thinking about it, talking about it. It's it's only going to be done if you do it with guys like the president of the bank sitting in the middle of you know, the private sector in with you guys is uh, is the only way it's going to happen anymore. The the days of the government having, we used to think there was limitless money. I We used to think, none of us thought about what it cost to go to the hospital 30 years ago. We didn't even know hospitals were competitive. In fact, I don't think they were. I don't think they competed. They just were hospitals. And we went there and we, we got fixed and that was that. Everything has changed. There are dollar signs on everything now. and uh, And we have to come up with ways to generate more dollar signs in Detroit and in the state of Michigan. So until we meet next time, I want you all to be thinking about that. If you think of anything, please let me know. And if it's like a pet rock or something, don't let the other guys know. You and I will go in on it together. Our National City Roundtable. We'll look forward to our uh, conversations in the future, uh, hosted by the president of the bank, David Boyle, and with special guests this time around, Oakland County Executive L. Brooks Patterson, Wayne County Executive Robert Ficano. Till next time, I'm Paul W. Smith. We'll talk to you in the morning, Monday through Friday from 5.30 till 9, right here on WJR.com and also at the great voice of the Great Lakes, News Talk 760, WJR.